Okay, I'm going to attempt to um, restore, if that's the right word, um, or service anyway, this Yuming Mark 8 dual gauge uh, projector. Um, mainly because the uh, the motor labours a little bit when it comes to um, driving the shutter around. Um, I've had this trouble before with UMIG projectors. Uh, my first projector was actually uh, a Bell and Howell 8mm standard 8, which I, I got for my 16th birthday quite a long time ago. And uh, I gave that to my parents when I upgraded. Um, and uh, it's still here and it's still uh, it's still working. When I did upgrade, I, I upgraded to uh, my first UMIG projector, which I think was called the UMIG P8. It had a a tape attachment on the side with a, an adjustable swinging uh, variable speed arm, which you could you could loop the tape through it from a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and the tape recorder would keep the speed of the projector in sync with the tape speed by varying it accordingly uh, because of course the projector is not really constant speed most ingenious so it allowed you to to sync a soundtrack very good indeed um, some years later I remember the date it was 1967 um, I was again bought a projector for my birthday and this time it was the UMIG Mark S Super 8 Magnetic Sound. I sold it in 1985 um, when I was returning to UK from overseas and uh, after that, that length of time, almost 20 years, uh, 18 years, it, uh, it has started to labour again just like this one is doing. Um, you had to let it warm up to attain a constant speed. So that's two UMIG projectors that I've had in my possession that have this problem and it just seems to be a lubrication issue they get sort of gunged up with uh, with age so I'm going to attempt to ungunge this one because I want to use it for uh, telecine transfers okay so I'm going to put the cam on a tripod and uh, uh, let's get to let's get into it I've got no experience of this um, I found a couple of videos on YouTube one for Riveri I think I think its name is 8mm projector renovation and one for actually for the Bell and Howell very similar to that one so they've been helpful but the problem I know with this UMIG is getting to the shutter so we'll see what we can do okay uh, here's the projector with the back removed um, of course I gave it a liberal oiling using good old three in one and one of the most important points I found was the the bottom bearing of the motor because you can't normally get at that but you can take this assembly off I'm not going to do it again because it's a bit of a fiddle to get it back um, this covers the, uh, the fan which also acts partly as a, as a flywheel I suppose uh, there's a screw here you can take that screw out there and you can take this out here, it's got a, a notch in for the screwdriver at the end. That pulls this assembly off and then you can take out these two screws here. Uh, this is where the mo motor pivots. When you turn it on forward it moves this way uh, to activate the drive against this. And when you put it on reverse it moves that way too. And the speed adjustment um, moves the, the drive um, up and down to adjust the speed. It's a bit fiddly to get back on that there because you have to thread that into a little hole. Um, so as I say I'm not going to take it off again but I took it off and turned it upside down put some oil in the bottom which helped make it run much smoother and uh, we've got it back together again now. What I've now got to do is to take this lot off here in order to get at the shutter part of the assembly. I've actually done this once before but I put it back together again without taking the shutter out because I couldn't work out how to get this off. I still don't know. So we're going to try to do that um, again. 
Now I'm probably going to move the camera. I'll, I'll zoom it back a bit uh, so that uh, there's less chance of me moving out of frame as I uh, as I mess about with this. Okay, take these two big screws out first of all, which hold the uh, the transformer in. Whatever you do, don't pick those off. Otherwise, the, you might find the transformer falling to pieces. And we've also got to remove these two screws here to, to wang all this out of the way. Um, oh, actually, we don't. We don't have to do that. Why do I think we did? Okay, so that lifts out all right. Notice the wire goes along here. It's held in place by this little clip. So we'll take that off. Also, a screw in here. So that comes off like that. And we can pull this wire out, which means we can put this to one side. Okay. So we can now see the whole shutter assembly and the drive shaft. Try and get that out of the way. Um, there's two. There's two shafts. Um, one. 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 One here, which is the which is driven by the motor, uh, and it drives the back uh, wheel uh, take up. And the shaft here with the shutter and the uh, claw mechanism on, and they're joined by this plastic tube, nylon tube. Um, so we can actually, I know from past experience, you can take that off here by judiciously moving this around. What I actually did before when I had this in pieces to this point was to loosen these clips which hold the bearings in, there's a bearing here, a bearing here and a bearing here, there's also a bearing there, it's a different type uh, and doing that actually freed up the motion of the drive and it went much better and uh, I left uh, these two looser um, and put it back together again thinking I'd solve the problem but then when I got round to actually putting a film in it slowed down again uh, even stopped on occasion, was having great trouble. So we're going to take these little clips out, careful not to lose any washers, which frees the bearing up here, and the same with this one. And this one, if you can see that, you probably can't. That actually frees up the, the rear, rear of this, and with a bit of just with a bit of juggling, it won't come right out. We can just sort of force that out. That plastic tube there. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. And when you do that, um, what's what's obvious straight away is that this this rear drive shaft. It's fine. It's free. It's it's uh, spins beautifully. No problem at all. This is the stiffer one. And uh, now what I've got to try and work out how to do is take this out. I've got no idea. There's two screws here. There's a nut here, uh, and there's uh, some screws down here. Only one of which. One right down inside. Only that one I can get at. 
I assume the whole mechanism will actually slide out, so I think what I'm going to do is experiment with these nuts here, but I'm going to do that off camera for the moment. Notice that uh, there's all the gear drives here, there's the um, sprocket mechanisms, the sprockets uh, are fed from this worm here, as well as the, the feed reel. Um, so there's quite a lot going on, but it looks looks to me as if the top and bottom the, the sprocket mechanisms etc are free they don't seem to be stiff difficult to tell all these circlips I'm not hopefully not going to take any circlips off I hate circlips uh, they go boing and then you lose them straight away so I'm hoping against hope that I can pull this mechanism out and that will allow me to test the sprockets better uh, to see if they are as free as they seem and uh, I suspect the problem lies in this. I suspect it's gunged up inside somewhere, which is why it's so stiff. Okay, so we we'll turn the camera off for a moment while I experiment. Now I've uh, I've discovered some screws that I hadn't seen before. There's four, I think, one here, one here, one here. And then this thing, there's another screw there. I've got a suspicion that if I take those four screws out, this whole thing is just going to lift out. So, here we go. Bear with me, this is unexplored territory. We'll see how we go. Notice all the screw heads, well you perhaps can't see, but all the screw heads have been painted with a grey grey paint to uh, show they've not been tampered with, I guess. Uh, this is going to be a bit fiddly. Are so good. Third screw coming out. Oops, I can lift it up if the screw driver holds it. No, it's dropped it. Magnetic screwdrivers. So, here we go, one left. Not very promising, it doesn't seem. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, it is indeed loosening the whole thing. I hope you can hear me. I keep forgetting to speak up. We'll see. Sort of you talk to yourself rather than the camera. I've taken the precaution of taking the gates out from the other side. Um, this is a dual gauge projector as I said so the gates are removable because of course you have to change them when you swap gauges so just to be on the safe side and to hopefully prevent any possible damage to the claw all right, well, it's loose all right that's good but not going to come out because it's attached to something down here. Alright, so I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs>